All right, so we just proved a zero existed, but we're probably wondering like, why do we even care? Um, so we proved a zero existed in this interval last time. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the bisection method to find that zero in the interval. Um, so now that we showed it existed, we're going to try to find the value. The bisection me method is a last resort. This is when nothing else is working. So let's go through the method. It'll make more sense once we do one. Um, so this will help us find real zeros. Um, not rational, it will help us find rational zeros, um, but rational zeros we probably would have already found using previous methods. So this is more like those real zeros that aren't rational. Um, so this will help us find them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our function f at f of a, let's just say f of a is the negative one, and f of b, and they had opposite signs, otherwise we can't use this method. And so we're gonna take that interval and we're gonna find its midpoint. We'll call it M. Um, and then the most error this value, when we find F of M, the most error it will have is either to the left or to the right. And so that'll be half of the interval. So that's where this formula is coming from. And that should be B minus A. We'll do the bigger number minus the small number. So error, is less than half of the interval. Visually, right, we can either be off this way or this way, but we can't go past A or B because we already found those values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the value for F of M and then kind of see is F of M above or below. So let's just jump into an example to check it out. So we already know this function has a zero on one, two. Um, so here's one, here's two, just space it out. Um, I think we found 1 and 37. It doesn't have to be accurate. But we're starting with the interval, 1 to 2, and they had opposite signs. Um, and we want to find the 0 with an error less than 0.05. So we'll have to shrink the intervals until we get closer to, um, till they get smaller. Um, this will make it accurate to one decimal place because an error of 0.05 basically means we could be off by plus or minus 0.05. So we can add or subtract 0.05 and we should still be pretty close. We should still be accurate. So let's just jump into how this works. So we're gonna divide the interval in half to find this, um, I'll call this round one. We're gonna have to do this multiple times. We're gonna find the midpoint. So the midpoint would be one plus two over two, right, just halfway, or 1.5. And then I calculate the error every round. So we know we're done when we find an error that's smaller than 0.05. So the error should be less than half of the interval. So two minus one divided by two is 0.5. So right, it's basically saying 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then we're gonna find the value for f of m. That's step two. So if you have a calculator, use that, otherwise, um, just use Desmos online or download an app on your phone. Um, no need to buy a fancy calculator. There's lots of apps. We're not gonna use calculators too much. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna find the value. The actual value isn't too much interest to me, um, but I'm curious if it's positive or negative. So 7.9 would be positive. Meaning, if I were to narrow this interval down, 1 is still negative, and 1.5 is positive. So that'll be my new interval. So the new interval is the one with opposite signs. So we don't know if there's a 0 between 1.5 and 2, because they're both positive. But between 1 and 1.5, there is. And so this will be round 2, and we'll keep going. It's going to get tedious, so be patient. We'll find the midpoint between 1 and 1.5 which is 1.25. Calculate the error every round because we're trying to get to 0.05. Um, I think we get 0.25. So it's still too big, but that's okay. We keep going till we find the error we want and we find the midpoint was 1.25. We go and plug that in. So same thing, 1.25 to the fifth. This is tedious, you just have to be patient. Minus three, if you know how to use tables on this, that works as well. 
So 2.00488, um, main idea is it's positive. So 1.25. So what interval do we use now? We use the interval where the signs change. So we're only going to go from, I like to draw the number line every time. I think it helps me a lot. So we're going to go from 1 to 1.25. Right, we're going on the interval where the signs change. So we find the midpoint. Which is 1.125. We'll find the error because if we have small enough error, then we're done. 1.25 minus 1, um, what's that, 0.125? So still too big. Remember, 05 is our cutoff. So we find the value at the midpoint a couple more times. I'm just, I'm not going to display the calculator anymore. Just plug that in. One point one two five to the fifth plus one point one two five to the third minus three, and I got a small decimal two two five eight six so on. Main idea is it's positive. So again, we're going to continue with the interval where the sign changes. So we'll find the midpoint. Let's. This is round four. I think this one took five or six rounds. So we're almost there. Sorry, there we go. Um, the midpoint, we add them up. One point oh six two five. Error is one half of the interval. And I got 0 0.0625. So we are almost there. Remember our cutoff, we want, we want 0 0.05. So we're slightly too big. We are almost there. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this midpoint into the function. So go ahead and plug that in. We're almost done, I promise. So we get f of 1.0625. Go ahead and plug that in. 1.0625 to the fifth plus 1.0625 cubed minus three. And we get a negative, four, four, six, and so on, right? We only care that it's negative. So now we're below, so we're actually gonna use the interval on the right this time. So we're gonna go from 1.0625 up to 1.125, right? I'm using this one because this is the one where the signs change. Um, the book doesn't do these intervals, like I'm drawing the number line, but I actually really like these number lines. I think they help me visualize it. So negative to positive. So round five. I promise you we're almost done. So let's find the midpoint. All over two. And I got 1.09375. And then the error is less than half of the interval. Uh, so I'm just typing that on my calculator. And I got 0 0.0325. You'll notice the error is just cutting in half every round, actually, because we just keep cutting the intervals in half. It's half of the previous one. And what is this? This is less than 0 0.05. So we're done. We don't even have to plug in. This is my x value. I would round it to one decimal place just because of the error, so it would be approximately 1.1. So this is my approximate zero. Let's plug in 1.1 now to see if it's a good zero. 1.1 to the fifth plus 1.1 cubed plus or minus three. Yeah, and it's close to zero, right? Within um, it's not exactly zero, but it's close. Um, if we want to be more accurate, you got to do this like 10, 20, 30 rounds. So this is as accurate as we're going to get in five rounds.
but hopefully this is helpful. Um, people would use technology. They'd use like Excel or some sort of computer software, some programming language you might know, um, if they wanted to get more accurate. And then the computer could do like 20, 30 rounds for you. Um, so when we do these by hand, we're, we're probably going to stop at an error of 0.05. In real life, we would want to get more accurate. So we'd probably go to like 00005. But right, that's going to take a lot of rounds. And so we don't have the energy to do that by hand. But technology could do it for us. Um, so when you do this on the homework, um, we're just going to go to 0.05. We're not going to go super accurate. All right, I'll see you back for the next section.